I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to this particular video, which is a CCNP Frequently Asked Questions video. I have worked with thousands of CCNP candidates and CCNPs around the world, and the same questions do tend to come up. Now, I know you're probably familiar with the exams that make up the CCNP, but one thing you might not be familiar with is there is an option for a couple of those exams. So you've actually got two paths to choose from, and we're going to discuss that and what has worked best for most of my students and the CCNPs that I've worked with. And then after that, we'll talk about the order in which you should take the exams. There is no required order, but again, there's an order that builds on your CCNA skill set that we will discuss. And then relating to the CCNA, it's another question that I'm frequently asked, and that's why we call it frequently asked questions, right? Should I take a break between completing my CCNA and starting on my CCNP? I'm also going to give you some study tips here that have worked well, again, for thousands of CCNPs around the world. And we'll start this discussion then with a look at our two paths. And again, we do have two options. The traditional path to the CCNP is a four exam path and you're familiar with these exams most likely I've also put up the latest exam versions of each one of these tests BSCI is more intermediate and advanced routing it builds on your CCNA studies nicely the BCMSN is intermediate and advanced switching techniques which again builds on your CCNA skills and the ISCW and ONT exams follow that for the three exam path you can take what Cisco calls their composite exam. It's the 642-9892 exam. And you take that in place of the BSCI and the BCMSN exams. Now, I've worked with plenty of successful CCNPs over the years that have taken the composite exam. And that's fine. I salute you. Believe me, it's a great accomplishment. Generally, I recommend you stick with a four exam path. I'll tell you why. The BSCI exam has more than enough material to keep anyone busy for one exam. I'm not trying to scare you about it because it's an exam that, you know, it's passed every day. It's a difficult exam. There's a lot of information, but it can be done. I just feel that that's enough of an exam for one day, that you don't need to add the switching material to it. Because in the BSCI exam, among other things, you're going to be studying advanced OSPF, including multi-area OSPF and route redistribution scenarios. You're also going to be studying Border Gateway po Protocol, BGP, which is a big, big topic. So again, I would recommend you stay with the four exam path. Again, certainly nothing wrong with going after the composite. Uh, I always admire people who go after the bigger mountains, but here I do think that the BSCI exam is a big enough mountain for anybody at one time. There is no required order in which you have to take these exams. But having said that, as I mentioned, the BSCI and BCMSN material builds nicely on the skills that you acquired when you earned your CCNA. So many students do choose to take those two exams first. And again, it's not a required path, but it does tend to be a preferred path. Now, should you take a break between completing your CCNA and beginning your CCNP studies? No. And I don't mean you can't take a day or two, because the CCNA is a tremendous accomplishment. When you earn it, you should be proud of it. But you've also done some other things beyond getting certified. You have developed the confidence and you have developed the self-discipline to study. And once you're in that groove, you really don't want to come out of it. I've seen CCNAs over the years say, hey, you know, I got the CCNA and we'll start the NP in a month or so, or two months or so, or next year. And then you see them 18 months later and they still haven't started. You want to keep that momentum because you've really got two different kinds of momentum going at that point. You've got your study momentum and you've got your success momentum. You have succeeded at a Cisco exam. You passed the CCNA. Keep that rolling. You know, when you get one victory, just keep on rolling to the next one. Don't stop for too long after the first one. Celebrate it. Again, nothing wrong with taking a day or two, but keep that momentum rolling. Very, very important toward earning your CCNP. Something else I want to offer you as far as the CCNP goes 
And if you're working on your NA, certainly plenty of free resources here for you as well. I've got over 200 CCNA and NP training videos, much like the one you're watching here. I've got some that are more protocol specific that you'll enjoy. Fully illustrated tutorials and practice exams for you on the tutorials page of my website. Again, I congratulate you for making the decision to go after your CCNP. It's a very valuable certification out there in today's networking world. And by following the tips that I've given you here, even if you go after that composite exam, uh, I wish you all the best in your pursuit of the CCNP. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. Don't forget about the tutorials page, and I'll see you on the website.